Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. South Africa's electricity reforms are again being prioritized amid uneven progress. Terence Kremer joins me to talk about the developments. Hi, Terence. Hi, Sashni. Now, government and business this week uh, called an acceleration on two key electricity reforms. That's correct. You know, um, government and business are working together on a number of areas, uh, power being the big one because we've had load shedding, a load shedding crisis that's been intensifying over the last number of years, but also on rail and logistics, um, as well as uh, on crime and corruption. So there's this uh, meeting that's on a sort of fairly regular basis that's now taking place at a very high level at the union buildings between these business leaders, 115 or so of them have signed this pledge to support uh, South Africa getting out of these sort of very big crises or burning platform issues. And that meeting took place this week. But on the electricity front, uh, there was this issue around uh, getting the electricity regulation amendment bill passed in the current parliament. And then the other thing is to get the unbundled transmission company that's coming out of Eskom, the national transmission company, South Africa, to get that into operation uh, as soon as possible. Those were the two big reforms, other than uh, also the one-stop shop that is helping with uh, getting the regulatory hurdles that developers face, getting those out of the way, that, that is being set up at the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. But those two were highlighted as needing to take place to really get the market structure in place for, to allow for a level playing field between Eskom and RPPs and to really unlock the investment that we need, both in generation but more and more uh, on the transmission grid. And I think at some point there's going to have to be a focus too on the distribution grid because this is really where the, the tyre hits the road and that's really where we've got a lot of problems at the moment. So the at, at focus at the moment is on the transmission grid on uh, moving uh, large amounts of electrons around the country uh, from generation sources that won't just be in the northeast of the country that we have currently really with uh, the coal-fired power stations in Mpumalanga and then moving the, uh, moving the electricity over large high-voltage power lines uh, into the rest of the country. There are obviously other plants around, but that's really the current flow, and that's going to change dramatically as we bring in more uh, independent power producers and more renewables or you're going to see uh, maybe even a reversal of the flow coming from the southwest of the country into the rest of South Africa over time. But progress on the reforms have not been smooth this week. No, uh, they haven't been smooth. And I think uh, on, two, on both the issues um, that were raised, the, the unbundling of the transmission company in, in TCSA, um, we saw that that's been going through a licensing process. Now, the licensing process is uh, one of three key requirements for the unbundling to take place, say, by November, December this year. So you need S uh, NERSA, uh, the, the energy regulator, to license uh, or transfer the license from Eskom to this uh, grid company. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one license. There's a transmission facilities license, the wires business and the operation of that. And then there's a trading license that they also require and an import-export license. And I think there was a, a hiccup, really, or the lack of smoothness uh, relates to the fact that only only the transmission facilities 25-year license got transferred or was approved to be transferred by the energy regulator on the 27th of, of July. And there was a hope that the full bundled application would be approved because uh, Eskom still requires lender consent because of this restructuring of the business. Everything in, in the immediate future is going to remain under Eskom Holdings because we know Eskom sits with this near 400 billion rands debt. Uh, but each of these separate units, generation, transmission, and then the distribution company, are going to have their own portion of that debt to pay back, or that will be that they will owe to the market. Mm -hmm. And there'll be intra-company loans between Eskom Holdings and these companies. So they need lender consent, and that I think they are waiting for the licenses. Uh, to, to be in place before they go to lenders and say, look, we've got everything in place. Plus they need a board, an independent board set up. So those two, the, the one hinges, I think, a lot on the license. I don't think this, the appointment of the board, which I think uh, there was a hope that it would have happened already, but it hasn't. 
that could probably take place. But to get the final boxes ticked, we need these licenses in place. And it's not clear from NOSA, you know, what process they're going to undertake. They have had the public hearings, and maybe it's just a sort of a, an approval process, and it can happen quite quickly. But I think that was a bit of a hiccup. And then on the, the major market reform, which is the changing of the legislation, business and, go and the presidency have called for this to happen in the sixth, sixth parliament, which is the current parliament. Now, we know we're going into an election year. We know that the, the different committees have got their programs that they have until the end of the year. And then we'll have a short period, really, after a parliament opens in February, after the State of the Nation in February. There'll be a short period till the election. We hope it'll be short. We don't know yet what the election date is. But the election could be around May. So if you look at that, it needs to be on the parliamentary program. Now, this uh, bill has been tabled in parliament, but there's no program for the passage. And if you speak to parliamentarians and lawmakers in the know that, you know, they say these processes take some time because, for instance, in this committee, the Mineral Resources and Energy Committee, they took the upstream petroleum resources bill right around the country into all the provinces to have public consultations. That takes months, uh, it takes a lot of preparation, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of time. And then it still has to go to the NCA, that's the National Assembly, then it still has to go to the committees in the NCIP. So <laughs> to get this done uh, by the end of this parliamentary term is going to be a real tall order. And I don't know if it's realistic or not. Those insiders suggest it might not be. Now, reforms in the area of the grid seem to be on the cards. Yes, I, I think there's a lot of discussion, and I think it's important uh, to understand that the grid has become a major constraint to the energy transition, and it really needs to be built out at a much more rapid pace. We know Eskom has very uh, sophisticated plans around this, around adding 14,000 14, kilometres of power lines, a lot of more substations and transformers, adding battery storage around a number of these substations to, to beef up the capacity of the grid, particularly in those provinces of the Western, Eastern and Northern Cape where the grid is majorly constrained. But there's a view that maybe financially as well as physically, logistically, that Eskom may need help beyond, you know, getting in this. Obviously, these are all built by the private sector. Eskom doesn't build these, these power lines, but uh, but they do manage it, mm -hmm. and they used to do the tr sort of cradle to grave design and everything, and they moved to an EPC approach, which allows the private sector to do more around the design, uh, etc. But still, it's all under Eskom, and Eskom tender processes and procurement processes. And there's a view that maybe alternative models, basically public-private pri partnership type models, say build, operate, transfer type models, uh, may be needed as well, both to mobilize the capital that's needed, about 235 billion rands that we need over the next 10 years uh, to invest into the grid. This is just the transmission grid. This is not the distribution grid. A lot more is needed there, and a lot more urgency needs to be shown there. But just on the transmission side, the, the, the large transportation of uh, large amounts of electrons uh, needs to, a lot of attention and a lot of money and a lot of material and a lot of effort and resources and contracting capacity and skills. And whether that can be all done at this sort of pace, which is a sort of six to eight times the sort of normal tempo that Eskom has been rolling this out. If it can be done at that pace just by Eskom, well, that's great. But I think more and more is a view that maybe that's not going to be feasible and we need some additional models. Now, we know we're near on uh, having any resolution on that. It will require a policy decision, which we haven't taken yet, but the electricity minister is making it clear that this is a priority for him and he is looking at potential alternative ways of mobilizing private finance and skills, um, but, making, but with the caveat that this has to be ultimately a state-owned asset. This is a natural monopoly asset, so it makes sense that it's in the state and that Eskom has full control over the system. So I think we are going to see that discussion, uh, I think, picking up over the next few months. And we may start seeing specific corridors being uh, pursued as a public-private partnership rather than just merely as an Eskom project, but ultimately under Eskom guidance and ultimately transferred back to the, what will not be Eskom, it will be the National Transmission Company, South Africa, 
so it will ultimately become its asset, but maybe for a period it will be owned, or maybe not even owned, but operated by a private company. Thanks for speaking with us, Terence. Pleasure. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.